Welcome to Edupedia World. In this module, we will discuss about problems in construction of index numbers, their limitations and types of index numbers. Next, we come to problems or difficulties in the construction of index numbers. The construction of index numbers involves certain difficulties which should be carefully dealt with so that construction or estimation of index numbers is not affected. Some major difficulties are as given under. First point, purpose of construction of index numbers. The purpose of construction of index numbers should be clear and rigidly defined. It is because there is no all-purpose index made. Every index numbers prepared has a specific use. If purpose of index number is not clearly defined, it will be wastage of time and efforts. For example, to construct consumer price index, we should take retail prices of various items including food, housing, education, clothing, etc. If by mistake we have taken wholesale prices, the purpose of construction of consumer price index will fail. Next problem, selection of base year. The base period associated with an index number is a period of time that is used as a basis for comparing changes in prices or quantities in a given period. Index number measures changes in the magnitude of variables over time with reference to base year. In other words, base year is the period with respect to which change is measured. Following guidelines are to be observed while determining the base year. The base year should be a normal year, that is, it should be free from abnormalities like wars, earthquakes, economic fluctuations, floods, famines, etc. The index for base year is always taken as 100. It helps to comprehend the changes easily or it is the period against which comparisons are made. For example, if index numbers for the year 2008 is 220 compared to base period 2000, it would mean that prices have increased by 120%. In other words, the same basket of goods in 2008 cost 1.2 times as much as in 2000. The base year should not be very distant from the current year. It is because we depend on the index numbers to give us trend so that important decisions and policies can be made. If there is too large difference between the base year and the current year, then the purpose of construction of index number will be defeated. The base period should be clearly defined, that is, whether fixed base or chain base. In fixed base method, the year of reference is kept fixed for all current years. In chain based method, the price of current year is related to the preceding year, not with the fixed year. Choice of the method would depend on the purpose of index numbers. Next problem, selection of number of items. It refers to collection of data which should be determined by the purpose for which the index is constructed. It is not feasible to include all the commodities to construct an index number. It is essential to decide which commodities are to be included. The data from unrelated commodities or periods should not be grouped together to construct the price index. Commodities should be representative of the group required for the purpose of index number. The number of commodities should be neither too large nor too small. However, the number depends on the purpose of index number also. For example, large number of commodities should be included if general price index is prepared and small number of commodities should be included if specific price index is prepared. Only standardized or graded items should be included so that reasonable standard of accuracy can be maintained. Next problem, selection of sources of data. After deciding the number of items to be included in the construction of index number, we have to take care of the sources of collection of the data. This is done to ensure the reliability of the data, otherwise the result may be misleading. To ensure that data are reliable and comparable, we must take sure 
that agencies or sources of data collection should be fairly reliable and authentic. Next problem, price quotations. We require unbiased price quotation so that adequate accuracy can be maintained. In order to check the accuracy of price quotations supplied by one agency, price quotations can be obtained from more than one agency. Some reliable journal or magazine can also be utilized for the purpose. To ensure uniformity, a proper method of quoting prices should be adopted. There are two methods of quoting prices. First, money prices. Here, prices are quoted per unit of the commodity. For example, rice 8 rupees 40 per kg. Second, quantity prices. Here, prices are quoted per unit of money. For example, 25 grams of rice per rupee. We need to decide on the kind of prices to be taken, that is whether wholesale prices or retail prices or control prices by the government. Next problem, selection of an average. We need to decide on the average to be used because index numbers are specialized averages. We need to select from various averages such as arithmetic mean, geometric mean, mode, median, etc. Median and mode are not used because of their limitations. We have to select from arithmetic mean or geometric mean. Out of these two geometric mean is taken as best average because it gives equal weightage to equal ratio of change. Though arithmetic mean is much simple to calculate, geometric mean is gaining popularity because of use of electronic computers nowadays. Next problem. Selection of system of weighing. It refers to assigning relative importance to different items included in the construction of index numbers because some items are most important and some are less important. There are two types of indices, unweighted and weighted. In case of unweighted indices, all commodities are of equal importance and in case of weighted indices, we need to assign weights to different items on the basis of their importance. The weights may be quantity weights. Here commodities are given importance according to the amount of quantity produced or consumed. Second is value weights. Here commodities are given importance according to the amount of expenditure incurred on them. The weights must be revised regularly depending upon the nature and reasoning of assigning weights to different items. And the last problem is selection of an appropriate formula. Now we need to select the appropriate formula as we have large number of formula available like Laspire's method, Passage method, Fisher's method, etc. We cannot depend on any one formula as there is no all-purpose formula. The selection of an appropriate formula will depend on the purpose of the index numbers and the nature of data collected. So these are the problems regarding the construction of index numbers. Next we come to limitations of index numbers. In the words of Colborne, in this changing world it is difficult to escape from the theoretical defects and in future, as far as we can see, it will not be possible from the theoretical point of view to make use of the best method of constructing the index number. The major limitations of index number are it provides relative changes only. Index numbers are only estimates of relative changes in various events. They cannot speak the truth as they are only the approximate indicators. They represent the generalized truth which is obtained on the basis of average of all the items. Hence, it does not apply to individual units. Next point, limited coverage. Index number are usually based on sample items. It is not practically possible to include all the commodities into the construction of index numbers. If the selected items are not able to represent the entire universe, then index numbers will not be true. Next point, Qualitative changes are ignored. If increase in price of the commodity is due to the improvement in the quality of the product, it is not taken into account. 
such an improvement in the quality is not reflected in the index numbers next point ignores changes in the consumption pattern with passage of time habits tastes and preferences trends undergo changes index numbers constructed in the previous years will be of limited use in such a case in order to use index numbers prepared on the basis of old consumption pattern should be modified which is almost impossible therefore index numbers so constructed will not be able to present a true picture next point limited applicability index numbers are generally constructed for some specific purpose if you want to use these for some other purpose the result may not be true there are no all purpose index numbers next point misleading results index numbers may not be perfect if wrong base year has been taken wrong formula has been taken wrong weightage has been taken or wrong sample of items has been taken in these cases the results would be misleading and the last point is based on averages index numbers are generally based on averages of prices items etc so they represent estimates of relative changes only because of based on averages they are the indicators of some change therefore the index numbers can be generalized only and cannot apply to individual units so these are some of the limitations of index numbers now we come to types of index numbers there are various kinds of index numbers these can be broadly classified into three categories first is price index numbers the price index numbers measure the general changes in prices between the current year and the base year general price index is used to measure the value of money of all the index numbers the price index numbers are the most important and are commonly employed in various economic and business contexts when percentage changes in price are different for different commodities then price index helps in representing these changes by a single numerical measure a price index may be a wholesale price index or a retail price index depending on the type of prices used wholesale price index numbers it reflects the general price level for a group of items taken as a whole in india it is the most popular price index used in the business industry and the policy market it acts as a indicator of the rate of inflation it will be discussed in detail later in this chapter next we come to retail price index numbers it reflects the general changes in the retail prices of various items including food housing clothing and so on the consumer price index is a special type of retail price index which is a primary measure of the cost of living in a country consumer price index numbers will be also discussed later in this chapter next we come to quantity index numbers the quantity or volume index number measure every change in quantities and enable us to compare changes in physical quantity of goods produced consumed or sold the level of physical output in an economy can be easily studied by this type of index number they can be constructed by using both simple as well as weighted method so quantity index number can be easily derived from price index numbers by interchanging p's to q's the indices of agriculture production industrial production exports imports etc are all quantity index numbers and last we come to value index numbers value index numbers compares the total value of some period with the total value of the base period the study of changes in the total value of production such as indices of retail sales or profits or inventories can be made by value index numbers so these are the types of index number thank you for watching edupedia world videos